Welcome back to the Tap Room Exclusive. I'm Dean Zarbaugh. I'm here at the Brew Kettle Production Facility in Strongsville. I'm with Jack Kephart, Brewmaster. I am with Justin Curlin in sales. Uh, you guys have now poured the White Raja, the 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 beer everybody kind of associates with uh, with Brew Kettle. I love this beer. This beer has been around for for quite a while. What was the what was the idea at a time when it was all West Coast? Everybody wanted West Coast IPAs at that time, right? That would that be correct? That yeah. it wasn't really. This was bef- this came out before the hazy train, oh, the, way, way before. the yeah, brutes, was- and all that. This is a good traditional West Coast IPA. Exactly. It was. Oh, I'll give the I'll give the long story of the uh, of the naming of the White Raja. Uh, Matt at uh, Fatheads has a you know a annual hop fest, and the first year he did it, uh, I think it was in two thousand nine. Uh, we didn't we didn't have a traditional IPA brew kettle, and we had a you know pale ale four C's, and we had a a double IPA uh, old twenty one, but we didn't have a IPA, and and Matt was still uh, brewing out of uh, Middleburg Heights. I mean they hadn't gone full production yet right. and he came out with headhunter and fabulous beer and getting fabulous press about it and, and me and him are friends and and i mean he's a borderline mentor even though i'm technically older than he is <laughs> that's what happens when you always work that way <laughs> that's what happens when you get started late brewing but anyway so i thought well if i'm gonna try to brew something we need an ipa you know in our stable and uh so i'm gonna brew something for this uh this hop fest of his and so i'm you know looking at the suppliers and they have this new hop out called citra which citra which at the time nobody had used at all in town i mean i hadn't heard anybody I'm, some of the bigger regional breweries had you know were experimenting with right. it and had beers out and it was just wild that it was you know easily accessible and we were able to buy it so so i got some of that and took a flyer on it you know not knowing it's not like uh we had any experience whatsoever with it but i just didn't want to make a beer that was at the time was simcoe Mm -hmm. centennial columbus you know chinook it was it was what everybody was using and the beers all had the same kind of same kind of character you know overtly citrusy and a little dankness pine which is good but i mean it just there wasn't the tropical aspect of of IPAs just wasn't around mm-hmm. at that point in time. So me and my assistant we brew this beer and and it's it's showing promise and we're tasting it in the fermenter. We don't we don't have time either. it's we're up against the wall trying to get get it ready for uh for uh, the festival. So mm-hmm. I literally came in that the day of the festival and and, oh, wow. and filtered it that morning. Wow. Uh, but before that, I mean I started thinking, well what are we going to call this? I mean and so I started just searching for any references to head hunting. Yeah. You know, on the internet. Nice. Then I just came Good across. Point. And I came across uh, a reference to these colonial leaders in the you know South Pacific that you know kind of ruled over these uh, over the islands where head head hunting was predominant. And I just came across they referred to their leaders as rajas, similar to what they do in India, but. But it was a totally different, you know, colonial aspect. It was probably still Britain. Uh, and they referred to this particular one as, as the White Raja. And he he basically got all the headhunters to stop, you know, actually headhunting. Oh. So all so he basically eliminating eliminated headhunting from those <laughs> island chains that they, they ruled over. So symbolically, you were, you were trying to say to Matt, "I'm going to get rid of you." No, uh, I'm yeah, kidding. I'm it, kidding. It, was, no. it was not necessarily that. <laughs> no, but it was but like it, just it, a nice little, like nice little twist, like a little, we, little jab. We had a nice laugh about it the day of the festival, and it and White Raja, I believe, went on to to win that first IPA festival. Nice. So it was, and like I said, it was it was very interesting because it just had that you know that tropical fruit mango kiwi yeah. kind of twinge that most other ipas didn't have at the time and it and without going to the to the hazy side to get it and yeah and we yeah hazy was 
No one expected that. No. <laughs> that was that thing just kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> Never really like, wait, what? When when can we make clear beer again? Um, can we do that? But I like hazies, but come on. No. Uh, but the, I, I love a good, at the end of the day, I love going back to a good classic West Coast style IPA. This is pretty much the epitome of that style, in my opinion. Really nice balance of those tropical little citrus flavors in the front, little dankness in the back, and just a nice bitter finish that just gives it a nice, really well, really well-rounded flavor. And at the time, ours uh, Raja was it was probably on the low side of bitterness for those, and that did kind of dovetail into you know where the trend was going with with hazies, where right. the where the hop additions were you know almost exclusively you know. Whirlpool editions just to try trying to you know soften and or lower you know overall IBUs. Yeah, and this is the I like you were saying a little bit is it kind of strikes a nice balance between going full like really bitey West Coast and and the hazies. It just kind of sits nice nicely in the middle. Mm-hmm. Gives you a little bit of both worlds without being you know super 150 IBUs. Nothing super crazy. It's just a nice drinkable uh, uh, IPA. I just love how it's it stood the test of time. You know, you're talking about the first time you brewed it, but you know the awards it's won since then, and you know, I think it was in 2016 it won the 150 beers uh, blind taste test across America. You know, basically taking you know the IPA category, putting 150 beers and blind tasting it. Um, fresh beer, I should say, yeah. um, and you're going up against, you know, the best of the best there. I mean, you're talking about going up against, you know, the Pliny and, you know, the other beers out there that people look at as like the marquee beer, and, you know, here they are picking this beer from a small brewery in Strongsville, right. Ohio, and, you know, so it gets all this national recognition for it, and it's only available in one state, yeah. you know, here in Ohio, so we should feel really lucky that we're able to, you know, drink this on a consistent basis, and um, you know, be able to have, have it uh, in our portfolio is, uh, you know, is an amazing thing. So, uh, and it, that's not the only award it's won. It's won multiple awards and um, for a good reason. And that's why it's still, you know, thought of locally as one of the best IPAs out there, if not Absolutely. the best. So. And it's currently in bottles, but you guys are, are in the in the middle of uh, kind of transitioning it to, to cans when we talk about our year-round availability um, for for bottles and cans this will be the first one of our year-round beers and um, that we will uh, we will move over or transition into uh, into 12 ounce cans it'll stay in the same at the same price point you know one of the things is, you know we, we've been trying to do as much as we can to listen to you know your customers our customers um, and you know one of the things they've they've been asking for for a while is bottle dating, and so uh, this year we made the commitment we have a, a bottle dater on on all of our packaging from now on we'll always have bottle daters we we understand the importance of of having fresh raja, um, and we want our customers to know that, and so uh, we made the commitment and we are moving forward with that, and obviously you guys can see now every one of our cans or bottles has has a bottle date on it, so that was a big thing, and then. You know, price was another issue. It was always, you know, we were we were at eleven ninety nine, and everybody else is is down there at ten ninety nine. So this year we made the commitment um, to bring that price back down to ten ninety nine and give the consumer a little bit more value for the package that they, you know, come uh, used to used to used to drinking. So, and that's that's done wonders for us. It's uh, kind of brought us to the back to where we need needed to be, right at the front of you know the best IPAs that are available. You know at Heinen's or, or any local uh, craft beer store. So. Well, it's like, you know, we're talking, there's so many beers out there nowadays. It's not the same market as when Raja came out. No. And you got it in, in, in a time where it's all competitive and there's, you're losing shelf space everywhere to all these breweries. You guys, you got to stay competitive. You got to stay fresh. Mm-hmm. And that's just what you got to do at, at some times. And, yeah. This is a this is a good beer. People, I I really hope people who might have been afraid of it at eleven ninety nine come back to it at ten because it's such a great beer. Well, and when we transition to cans, we'll be updating the the look of it as well. So you'll see all new graphics uh, with it, and I think that is going to in in and of itself will bring new customers on board because maybe they've seen it around and you know I I don't want to try that yet, but now. 
you know, with a fresh new look, they're going to come in and go, oh, what, what is that? Oh, I'm going to try that, even if they've never, maybe they had it or they're just trying it again for the first time. Um, so, but we, we feel like that's going to be an important step for us. Um, you know, that's our, it is our flagship. I mean, it's our best seller. It drives, it's, you know, what would you say? Somewhere over 50% of our, our, our capacity at this point is. Yeah, I would is, say, yeah, 50, 65, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, it's White Rajas. So, um, you know, it's an important beer for us. Um, and I think it's an important beer for the Cleveland craft beer market in general. Oh, yeah. Um, because it is a it is a staple. Um, and, you know, I feel like, you know, anybody that puts it on tap in their bar or restaurant or anybody that, you know, grabs a six pack of this knows that they're getting one of the best IPAs in the country. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's a that's a that's a great uh, kind of a privilege for us to hold. Right. You know, and there's, a, you know, a lot of places might be who who aren't really like craft they might just be more restaurants mm-hmm. might not necessarily ha- know what ipa and all this stuff but you go into the places and you always see white raja as their ipa offering because yeah. they know it's local they know people are looking for it yeah. and they know people are going to enjoy it yeah yeah like i said we're very lucky um you know that, that just as a as a ohio craft beer consumer I feel like we're really lucky in general. I mean, some of the guys you mentioned, you know, the fat heads and, you know, the guys at Columbus Brewing Company and, you know, a handful of them. We're really lucky that we're, we have some amazing IPAs being made in the state. Yeah. And for me, as being able to sell White Raja, I feel like I'm really, really lucky because I get to sell what I consider to be the top one or if not right up there with them. Absolutely. So, uh, and there's very few breweries out there that can, that can stand up in that bunch and know yeah. that that not only are they going to uh, be on the same level, but, you know, uh, be able to stand the test. So. Right. Is this a style you like to brew yourself? Yeah. Jack? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a heavy drinker at home. I mean, I, I, I maybe have two or three beers a week, tops. But, yeah, it's, it's fun to just try to pull those flavors out and, and try to, you know, come up with new ways to, to drive, you know, drive the flavors that people are looking for, whether it's uh, trying to find new hops or new processes that, you know, uh, bring out, you know, the the oils that, yeah. that give us those, you know, fruity, citrusy flavors. And if someone's coming into your places wanting to eat with this... I mean, traditional. I think any IPA goes with anything that's spicy. Yeah, right. I mean, definitely say that. And anything that that's spicy, an IPA is going to hit the you know hit the nail on the head for that. So, um, any kind of chicken wings, anything that's going to have a little bit of a you know kind of a, a nice hearty flavor to it. The the hops are so pungent that yeah. no matter what, it's going to bring out some of that. And with spice, typically it just makes your taste buds go berserk over right. it. You know, so that's why they say spice and. IPAs, so I would just tell you to you know, look if you're coming to the brew kettle, try our wings. You can't, you can't yeah. go wrong. They're amazing, and uh, you know, with an with a with a white raja, they go awesome. Yeah, a buddy of mine mo- just moved to Florida. He says he can't find a single place that does wings anywhere near as good as your guys's. Yeah, Seriously, cool. he's like, you got they brew kettle's wings are just a, a thing of their own. Yep, that's right. So, uh, thank you guys again for your time. Tune in next week for the brew kettle grand finale.